I'm your host, not for possession, Narcissa DeVille, and welcome to Hell, the podcast. Yay, I'm excited. Ew, I've been wanting to do, first of all, I have been wanting to do a podcast for so long. I, I did one back in 2017, and I did it for like six months to a year, and then I don't know what happened, and then I tried doing one again, and I just... I don't know. It's it it tends to be something that's hard to do on your own, and so mm-hmm. I ended up just saying, "Oh, I'm just gonna um, like just say fuck it." And then um, I found this Anchor app, and I was like, "Oh, wow, this is cool! Like this, maybe something that'll make my life easier." So, um, yes, this is my the first inaugural <laughs> podcast for. Um, this and I wanted to have you on because um we're kind of in the same boat I feel like as far as like um people who are like mostly kind of bi but now very heavily leaning towards women right. and um I thought you could appreciate some of the things that like I, I obviously I wanted to start this episode off talking about um the horror that was lesbian tinder (laughs) Um, oh my god yeah did you did you ever try tinder or were you just on her i never officially downloaded tinder because for some reason i feel like it was like more intimidating for me i guess just because i had never downloaded tinder at all even when i was more interested in guys and stuff Uh because I don't know, like, the thought of putting myself out there was kind of scary, but for some reason, I decided to download her, and I was like, you know, whatever, we'll just try it out. I didn't put that much information or anything on there, mostly just my Mm -hmm. pictures, Right. and I also didn't really end up talking to that many girls on her either, because I didn't, I found that, you know... As you know, I'm into butches a lot and like yes. more masculine yes. girls. Very, right. Very that same. So I didn't really come across um, many girls that I was actually attracted to because a lot of them are really feminine. Yes. And the few that I did talk to were very much gave me like fuckboy vibes, which I can be into, but like, yeah, not when they're actual fuckboys. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, it's the aesthetic. It's the aesthetic exactly. you like from the exact same way. I call yeah. it fuckboy with a heart of gold. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's like your aesthetic says, yes, my strap is this good and I will ruin your life, except you don't. <laughs> exactly. Your aesthetic yeah. says that, but you're like an actual good person. I fully feel that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like what the vibe that I was looking for, for sure. Because yes. like you said, it's not, I don't, like, I like, yeah, I like the vibe where it's like, yeah, like, I'm hot, I'm cool, like, I'm mm-hmm. a little cocky, like, mm-hmm. I'm going to strap you the fuck down, and it's going to be yes. amazing. Yes. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, I want someone to actually, like, not treat me like shit for Fully. once. So, <laughs> Fully. so when I started talking to a couple girls on her um Mm -hmm. they definitely gave me the vibe of like oh these are like actual fuck boys like yeah um one of them like immediately asked for my number which is fine i gave it to her and then she started texting me and she was just sending me a bunch of like very fuck boyish pictures of herself or whatever and i was like okay but like she oh my god kind of kept (laughs) sending those pictures of her like biting her lip and like all of this stuff and like she would i knew that she was trying to get me to send her pictures back but she yeah. never like actually directly asked until she kept sending me sending me sending me pictures and she was like can i have a picture and i was like all right you could have just said that like right so i sent her like a normal picture and immediately she was like okay so where like where do you live like where are you located and i told <laughs> her the general area and she was yeah. like all right do you want to meet up later like i'm only 15 minutes from there and i was like Girl, oh I was like, look, (laughs) like, I don't even, my thing is, like, I'm not really an online hookup kind of person because I'm, like, scared of meeting strangers online. You know what I mean? No, that's legit. I'm the same way. 
And I feel like a lot of, like, I get that, like, hookup culture is very normalized now and, like, yeah. whatever, but it's just, I'm not super comfortable just texting someone, like, three messages and then being like, all right, let's meet up at this location. Like, fully. Yeah. Fully I'm that. like, I need to know a little bit about you. I need to know that you're not yeah. a serial killer. I need to know that fully you're not that. just, like, straight up just using me for sex. I need to, like, yeah, I, and- I get Oh, no. Continue. You no, know, I was just going to say, there has to be, for me at least, there has to be, like, a little something there. Like, I have to feel like I know you a tiny bit. Like, right. I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm just not into, like, meeting up with a complete stranger. No. Like, I'm no. not into that. I need to know that we're at least going to get along and it's not going to be, like, weird or something. Like, yeah. of course, we can only get to know each other so much, like, through texting, mm-hmm. but... I told I literally told her that I was like you know I'd rather like get to know you a little bit better before yeah. we meet up and she's like oh well isn't that the best way to get to know someone though is like in person and I was like all right that's but like so that's funny. not what I meant <laughs> that's such a like I hate to I, this is gonna sound problematic that is such a guy thing to say though yes <clears throat> yes which makes that's me a little insane. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that because that's such a guy thing to say because back when I was so I've I've done every fucking dating app on the planet. Um, Mm -hmm. I did Tinder back a few years ago um, and it was like exclusively men for a while and then um, I opened it up to everyone and that was like a whole thing. But I'm. it was funny and what annoyed me the most about Tinder is it mostly only showed me men back when I was doing everyone and i was like Mm -hmm. okay like i think i was shown one woman to every 10 men oh wow yeah it i swear like i never counted it officially but it was always like okay 20 men okay oh here's one woman and it was always a femme woman so it was never like exactly what i was interested in either Mm -hmm. and so many times guys would be like oh hey like you know let's meet up let's do this blah 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 and I'm like, or the be- the best one, because I'm in, you know, Vegas, it was like, oh, I'm only in town for one night. Well, I guess I'm not seeing you then. Right. Like, okay. sorry, I'm not, I'm not here to do your one night, you know, party or whatever. Like, I'm just not here for it. Yeah, no, I, w- like, for I don't me, think I'd be down for that either. No, yeah, exactly. It's like, for me, it's already hard enough, like, being a trans woman i'm already kind of like edgy about like who i'm gonna let see me naked anyway (laughs) like that's Mm -hmm. my personal thing so like it's definitely not gonna be a stranger like i'm sorry so it's just so funny because all of that experience with that person like it just i'm like that's such a guy thing so that's so exhausting but then as someone who was on her for a minute i don't remember if i saw any there but i know there were other apps and this is one of the things i wanted to have someone to commiserate with because like especially on tinder but also on um several other dating apps there are first of all a great number of couples Mm. who are just looking for someone casual to play with which like (sighs) I, I hate that so much. Like, okay, let me let me rephrase that. I respect people who are poly and who want to, you know, do whatever. But mm-hmm. for me, it feels as though, like, maybe the woman is, like, vaguely interested in sleeping with another woman. But really, it's more like, oh, it's her boyfriend slash husband's, like, porn like king. fantasy. Yeah. yeah. And she's going along with it. And it's like, neither of them see you as an actual person. They just see you as someone to like, basically like a living, you know, fuck toy. Right. Like a prop. I feel like <laughs> I've definitely seen that. I even did see that um on her a few times where a few times it would be like a lesbian couple, but I also saw a lot of straight couples on there too. And I was yeah. like, what are you guys? And I think they put in the description like, oh, looking for a unicorn or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I had to look up what that meant because I had no idea. And I was yeah. like, um, yeah, no, I'm not for that. Yeah. Because it's exactly. Like you said, like, it kind of just feels like you're being used and it's like dehumanizing. Right. Like, I. Because- I just want to be like actually valued as like a person yes. and like yes. you know I don't know yeah. I don't really feel comfortable in that type of situation. 
Yeah. And I, it was funny because when I was, and I only did Tinder this time around again for like, I don't know, maybe a week because I was just so over it. I had done Tinder for like a year, maybe the last time. And I finally had to just leave because of my mental health. But then like, um, <clears throat> this time around i was like i'll give it a week and then i was like i'm done and i noticed there are like three different distinct types of couples on tinder the first one that mm -hmm. i noticed and this is probably the least annoying i mean it's still annoying but it's like the least bad of the group is like the people who are like oh i'm in a relationship and i'm really really happy i'm just looking for friends and i'm just like that's not what this is for yeah get bumble where you can have the friends feature i don't know what to tell you um right but then there's like the people who are like oh we're in an open relationship and one of us is on here and the other one's on here and it's whatever and i'm like okay whatever but like the thing that i hate the most is like the you know like i was saying like there's couples i've seen this in people's like profiles it's like we're a package deal and blah 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 blah, blah. Mm. And, it, and the thing is like almost all of the time with these couples like the woman is like gorgeous and like too femme for me but still gorgeous but the husband is like a, a troll doll and i'm like please go back under your bridge yes. sir i don't i don't <laughs> oh know what to tell God. you go back under your bridge i can't take this i i noticed that a lot too and i think just like i mean i feel like that's a trend in general with a lot of straight yeah. couples is like and I think it's such a double standard because I feel like women have to like are put under this pressure to look so yes. good and like oh, fully. perfect all the fully. time and whatever and then these ugly ugly ass <laughs> dudes like can get like these gorgeous fully. women but if you're like an average or like you know not conventionally attractive woman fully. you like can't find a boyfriend in like 20 years and i'm like what the fuck like it's so yeah. annoying and i just i look at like these guys and i'm like what like what is it about you because most of the time their personalities aren't no. great either so it's no. like i just don't understand but then women have to like be beautiful mm -hmm. and gorgeous and like put and together smart. all the time and these and dudes, yeah you know have everything together and be able to take care of the man mentally you know it, it is kind of interesting because i feel like how many times do you have you as a woman been told like well maybe your standards are too high that's why you're still single and i kind of wonder if that's not like some internalized shit that we as women just have and so if you reach a certain age, you're just like, well, maybe I should just lower my standards. And that's how you, and that's how all these gorgeous women end up with these like idiot guys, because it's like, well, my standards are too high. Everyone says so. Right. And I actually, I think that's definitely, I've even thought that myself before, oh, because, yeah, but like, I've had this discussion with one of my friends where, cause we're like, you know the single bitches yeah. we're like no like we're not gonna well not anymore like, lower our standards <laughs> or whatever okay <laughs> yeah not we'll anymore. get into that i'm very excited <laughs> yeah. to get into that <laughs> well yeah so like i used to be like single for yeah. life like whatever and me and my friend um we would always be talking especially recently we would be talking about like you know we are the type of people that were like, no, we don't need yeah. a partner. Like we're independent. Like we're happy. Yeah. You know, I'm very um, adamant on the fact that like I need to be happy by mm -hmm. myself. You know, I don't want to depend on anyone else for happiness or anything. Oh. But then, you know, especially since quarantine hit, me and my friend were like, "Girl, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like the single life is just not nope. it anymore." Because it's just. It sucks to, like, not have someone to share things yes, with and, like, fully. you know, no, and, like, be close to, like, on a different mm -hmm. level. So, you know, lately we had been, like, oh, my God, girl, like, you know, we're all about the single life, independence, whatever. But, you know, it's nice to maybe have someone to, like, come to and, you know, cater to you or take care of you or fully. whatever. So the thing is that even lately, like, like I would say this year me and my friend would have that discussion and we'd be like damn like maybe our standards are too high like maybe yeah. you know like maybe we're just our expectations are too high yeah. or whatever and then immediately like we would cut each other off and be like no, yeah bitch like you deserve the best fully like, 
you're not going to lower your standards for other people. Like people have to meet your yeah, expectations. At the very like, least. Cause then, right. Cause then when you lower your standards is when you end up in like an unhealthy mm-hmm. relationship or like in a relationship that just doesn't meet your yeah. needs or like doesn't stimulate you or whatever. And it's just not worth it. Like I'd rather be single than be yeah. a relationship that is not healthy yeah. for me. You know? you know, and it's so funny that you say that because I remember like back before I started to like officially realize that, oh, clearly I'm like, you know, a lesbian, which is still really weird for me going like full 180, right. but that's, that's its whole own thing. And I've made videos about that, but I remember like, I like the biggest change for me is I got so much attention from men. Like it's not even funny. And most of mm-hmm. it was not like really wanted, but, and it always seemed right. like a lot of dude, and I don't know if this was something they just like said or just whatever they were hoping to get in my pants. I don't know. But it seemed like a lot of dudes were like immediately like in love with me and like obsessed. And I was like, okay. But like none of them were particularly like interesting to me. And there were so many times when I remember this one guy was like super, super into me and like pretty nice. And like, like there was nothing wrong with him realistically but it just didn't do anything for me and finally I was just Mm -hmm. like I don't I don't like we were talking for a few days he was like in his mind we were already dating but in my mind I was just like I don't know this really isn't doing it for me but like whatever and eventually I was just like you know I think I need to take some time for like me and it was fine and he I, I like finally you know we stopped talking, but then he would message me and be like, you know, kind of being impatient about how long I was taking to like decide. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. but you're not really respecting my boundaries. Yeah. And like at the time I was having kind of a, a whole personal mental health crisis and, you know, he's basically worried about him and I'm like you're not even the top of my you're not even like the bottom of my priority list right now like sorry dude I have to deal with me and uh, you know I asked you for space very politely I think and uh, you know he just really didn't respect that and so I was just like you know what I'm just gonna block you but I feel like you know there was a time when I was talking to him or when I had like stop talking to him I should say and I was like god like what's wrong with me like I keep saying I want to be in a relationship I want to be in a relationship and there's nothing wrong with this guy but it's just not what I want and I feel like as women we're kind of told like well you know if he's not an asshole and he likes you like why don't you like him back yeah and that's so sad because it's like literally the bare man yeah i mean that's like like, what a boring description of a person like there's nothing wrong with him like that's not could you imagine that's like your yeah that's like your baseline for your date well there's nothing wrong with him like he's not you know an alcoholic that i know of he's not like screaming at me so like i guess that's fine that's a good enough relationship like that's I don't yeah that's horrible and I think that especially with straight couples a lot of girls fall into that trap of like oh well he's like nice to me most of the time and like he doesn't like you know hit me or something I'm like bitch like what yeah and I'm just like like I I have a lot of friends that are well not a lot but like I have a couple of friends that have that mentality and I'm just like girl you can't be settling for that because like I said I'd rather be single than to be in that type of like relationship yeah I'm like it's not worth it to me I'm like I don't want a relationship that's just like well he's okay like that's not that's not enough exactly and I mean of course now I don't want you know he and well I guess because he him lesbians do exist but like not like an actual man right (laughs) That I'm not down yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would like yeah. to talk about, because I have been very excitedly watching this um, for the past few weeks, and I knew that this was coming, but officially you are seeing someone, which I'm very excited for you for. <laughs> Tell me yes, about how yes. that came to be. Well, I... <laughs> 
I made a post on Tumblr that was like, oh, I just really want a hot butch girlfriend that plays the drums or the guitar or something Love like it. that. And she followed me, I think like a little bit before I made that post. And I followed her back because I go through my followers to, you know, black yeah. men and people that don't have their age totally. in their bio and all that stuff. So I look at the profiles and usually like nine times out of 10, if someone's cute and like, yeah. you know, I don't know, they have like a nice blog, like I'll follow Same. them back. So I saw this girl followed me. So I followed her back because I thought she was mm -hmm. cute. And, you know, she had her age and her <laughs> bio and everything. So I was like, all right, cool. And I made that post. And then she, well, I didn't know at the time, but I received an ask that said, oh, like how funny I'm actually a drummer and a guitar player and more Ooh. or something like that. And she put like a little face and I was like, Oh, what's the end? Right. Like, um, I'm, you know, like I'm interested. Yeah. So then I answered the ask and I was like, Oh, like that's great or whatever. Like, Oh, that's so hot. Mm -hmm. Like whatever. And then in the tags, I was like, I love drummers. Like it's the fingers for me or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> and that we we're actually talking about this yesterday because I asked her because she ended up messaging me after I answered that ask, probably like the mm -hmm. next day. And she told me she was like, Oh, I'm the one that sent you that ask. Love like, it. um, and I was like, Oh, well, what's the and more or whatever? And she's like, Oh, you'll have to wait and find mm -hmm. out or whatever. So oh my. <laughs> I yeah, so I asked her, I was like, What made you message me? Because I've received over the course of me having that mm -hmm. blog a lot of those types of asks where it's like oh like I have a question yeah. on you or like I think you're so pretty or oh I'm exactly like mm -hmm. what you want or whatever but then like nothing ever happens because no one ever messages yeah. me and I'm like well that's fucking great yeah. like how am I supposed to know <laughs> who you are and it's not that I don't appreciate those asks but they're just frustrating because it's like well online like all these mysterious people apparently in the shadows <laughs> like think that I'm great right. or whatever but no one ever comes forward and like actually approaches me right and then so I asked her why she messaged me and then she told me that it was like the way that I answered the ask and the fact that I was like oh it's the fingers for me she was like okay no I need a message oh my god I love that and <laughs> yeah so she messaged me and we started talking like super normally because after the last time that I had gotten close to someone over mm -hmm. Tumblr, I ended up really yeah. hurt and all this stuff. And like, I told myself, like, I basically promised myself, like, I'm not going to get close to anyone online yeah. anymore. Like, that's not in front of me. Like, I'm just not about no, it. Of like, course. I need to have someone in front yeah. of me. Like, I need to be able to touch them. Yes, whatever. no, fully. And and so then we just started talking normally we weren't even sexting or anything which is normally what I do on Tumblr because I didn't want to get close yeah. to anyone yeah. um usually after that last situation when people try to get to know me I kind of like shut it down and I'm like no yeah. like you know I put up my my wall and I'm like I'm not really trying to get to know you like that I'm like if you want to sex or something and I'm in the mood that's but fine like but I'm not right so <laughs> We were just talking normally. We didn't even sex or anything. Like, we were just, I don't know. She was, like, cool to mm -hmm. talk to. And which you got to have. She said. I said, huh? which you have to have for me, at least. Yeah, of course. I'm, like, I felt, like, some type of, not a connection necessarily right mm -hmm. away. But it was, like, oh, okay. Like, we're not even sexing. And I, I'm still enjoying <laughs> talking to her, you yeah. know. So, I was, like, all right, cool, whatever. But I didn't think. And I definitely, like I said, wasn't planning to get close to her. And then. I think the moment that I realized, like, oh, okay, like, there's, I don't know, like, I like mm -hmm. her or something a little bit was when she, because I'm, like, obsessed with the beach. I love the beach, okay. like, whatever. So she was going, like, on a mini vacation or whatever, mm -hmm. and, like, she was going to be at the beach for, like, four days, nice. and she was telling me about it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so jealous, whatever, and then she sent me a gif on tumblr and she was like oh do you like sunsets and i was like yeah i love sunsets and she goes and since i had told her that i was obsessed with the beach she ended up sending me pictures and like a gif from a video that she oh. took of the sunset at the beach oh my god me. that's so cute <laughs> and i was like oh i was like well i wasn't expecting that and she's like yeah i took it for you whatever and then she goes 
she sends me the gif and she's like oh i have nowhere else to send this to you because so, she was like it's a video but you know tumblr just like yeah. some videos so of course i'm like oh well you can add me on snapchat and then she added me on snapchat she sent me the video of the sunset and then from that day like we just kept talking and she was um at like a friend's birthday party mm-hmm. or something um the friends that she was at the beach with and she was drinking so she was like very you know friendly and stuff on yeah. she, like she was sending me like videos of herself That's like so laughing cute. and like doing stuff with her yeah. friends yeah and like the moment that i saw because we had sent each other like regular yeah. pictures and I was like, oh, she's super cute, whatever. But the moment that I actually saw her, like, in video and, like, mm-hmm. talking and laughing and stuff, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, I literally thought to myself, I was like, oh, no. Like, she's really, really yeah. cute. And I remember, and I'm pretty sure I told you, I was like, oh, my God, she wants to talk. Yes, I do remember me. that. Because I was like, do it. <laughs> do it. I know. And I was so scared because I was like, no, because I'm telling you, like, once I saw her like that, I was like, uh-uh. Like, I feel like I'm, if I start talking to her and, like, I hear, like, I already heard her voice through the yeah. videos and stuff. But I was like, if I start talking to her on the phone, like, I'm going to start liking yep. her. Like, I knew it. I already yep. knew it. Which is why I resisted so much. Because, like I said, I didn't want to get close to anyone right. that wasn't in front right. of me. <clears throat> but she ended up, like, pu- not pushing me, obviously. No. She was, like, super persistent yeah. and stuff. And then... I ended up saying, oh, no, it was actually that night. I was like, um, yeah, like, I'm, I'm not really ready to talk on the mm-hmm. phone or whatever. So she was like, oh, well, do you want to talk through here? So we basically started sending each other, like, Snapchat videos, like, back and <laughs> forth until, like, 3 in oh the morning. Oh, my God, that's so cute. Literally just both of us, like, laying in our beds in the dark, just, like, talking. That's so cute. And, <laughs> and then at the end, she was like, we should have just talked on the phone. And I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> because, like, it was basically the same yeah. thing. But I was just so nervous. But I remember, like, I was like, oh, my God, I love her voice so oh. much. And she told me, she was like, I love your voice. Oh, I love like, that. All this stuff. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I was so shook because... I don't like my voice. Like, I don't know why. I just, I don't know. I just don't like my voice. I feel like most people don't really there. like like the sound of, yeah. right. And I told her, I was like, oh, like, I don't like my voice. She's like, no, like, I love your voice. Uh-huh. Like, I can listen to it forever, all this stuff. And I was like, oh, my That's God. That's so cute. So then, since then, I think it was literally the day after that happened. I was like, fuck it. Like, let's just talk mm-hmm. on the phone. Because I literally could not fall asleep that night because I was thinking about her. Like, which is not a normal thing for me. Like, this stuff doesn't really happen to me. Like, I don't really open up yeah. like that and that quickly usually. Yeah. So, we ended up talking on the phone the next day for, like, five or six oh hours straight. Oh, my goodness. Been I know. there. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then literally, like, we haven't stopped talking since that That is day. so, so cute. Yeah, so that's what happened with that. I, that's how that I happened. love that. You know, and I'm so happy for you because, like, I, oh god, you know, I'm I'm the sort of person that like, I I always want my friends to like have exactly what they want. I want them to be super happy. And so when I when you were telling me about all of this, I was like, oh my god, this is so great. This is gonna go great. You're gonna like have a girlfriend and you're like no 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 and I could like I could tell (laughs) but I was like no girl just like let it happen because I'm fully that girl like oh it's so it's the worst I'm fully that girl who is like a little bit cynical but also secretly a romantic and Mm -hmm. I just want to see everyone just happy and in love and living their best life and like I could just tell that that this was coming so i'm very happy to see it we love to see it um (laughs) yeah no and you deserve it girl it's so like i don't know it's so wild to me because i've i've made so many posts that are not exactly like that but definitely similar and i'm just like okay tumblr do your magic (laughs) Because I know, so like, I know people who have met people on Tumblr and, like, that's their relationship. I guess some people have met girls on TikTok. I don't know. I don't know how that one works. Mm. Um, 
I would not mind someone slipping into my DMs on TikTok, let me tell you. Because that was one of the things on Tinder, too, that I was, I forgot to get to, was that, like, most of the girls were femme. So it was, like, the majority of the people on Tinder were femme girls, couples, and then just straight up men, which I was like, okay. Which is Mm -hmm. part of what pushed me off, is I was like, okay. So the people that I'm actually interested in, like, there's maybe five of them. And I've already swiped on all of them. And I haven't heard anything. So I guess this is done. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm not making the first move. And I hadn't even, I matched with like two people. And I had a conversation with one of them. And we said, like, maybe a, hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? And then that was it. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Sick. And I was like, well, that's not... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's yeah, not like thing. that's not gonna yeah. go anywhere so i was yeah. just like all right well i i think i'm just kind of like over this i didn't i don't really remember what possessed me to get tinder i think it was somebody i was talking to i actually have it's so funny i have so many like butch friends on tumblr now and i think one of the people mm-hmm. i was talking to they were like oh you should try tinder again and i was like oh, okay fine whatever so i did and then i was like why did yeah. i do why did i listen to you i'm sorry but like this was this no was I, I totally agree because I especially after because I okay I've literally only met one butch ever like in real life which was my fuck buddy at the time until like a few months Love ago that. and <laughs> and after that situation was done mm-hmm. because she got a girlfriend mm-hmm. um I was like, oh my god, like, can you get laid? Mm-hmm. Like, I want whatever. And my friends were like, girl, just get on Tinder, just get on Tinder. Yeah. Like, come on, hook up, whatever, whatever. And I was like, look, I understand what you're saying because yes, I'm sitting here complaining about the fact that I want to get laid, yes. but like, it's just not like I'm also like weird about who I let see my yeah. body, who I let touch no, me. Of like, I'm I fully not, understand that. I've yeah like i'm not super like i said i'm just not super into like hookup Mm -hmm. culture like one night stands and all that stuff like i want to if i'm gonna have sex with you like i need to trust you on some level like just on a human level to know that you're you know you're not gonna hurt me you're gonna want to you're gonna want me to have a good Mm -hmm. time you're gonna you know like i'm and it takes a little bit you know for me to get to that point with Mm -hmm. people so i was like and my best friend, she was like, come on, like, just get on there and just, like, fuck people. And I was like, look, I understand. Like, yes, ideally, that's what I would want to mm-hmm. do. But I know myself and it's not that easy. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know. Like, it's just, like, a weird type of situation for me, right? I, I, that's why I never ended up downloading it because I was like, I know myself. Like, I'm just going to start talking to people and then they're going to be assholes yes. and then I'm going to stop talking to them. And, like, it's just... Also, like, I'm a huge introvert, so it's kind of hard. Like, it takes energy for me to, like, interact with people. (laughs) So even just, um, like, texting someone, especially when it's, like, small talk and you guys don't know each other and that stuff, like, that is kind of draining for me. So it was kind of like, and I had done it a little bit on Mm -hmm. her, like, for example, with that girl and there were a few other girls like that. And I was like, I'm not enjoying this process of, like talking to people and trying to get to know Mm -hmm. them and them not really trying to know me because they just want to fuck and like all this stuff and it was just like oh i'm just tired of it like i don't i I don't know i just got over and that's why i never downloaded tinder because i was like look i don't know you know i had never been on tinder but my friend actually met her now fiance on Mm -hmm. tinder which she's a lesbian oh love that and yeah and she was she went on tinder well she was on like tinder for guys before because she was she went through like a phase of like she was hooking up with guys after her last breakup and stuff and she ended up getting onto lesbian tinder and i was like girl be careful because you're gonna fall for someone on tinder and you just got a toxic relationship and you need some more time and whatever yeah and she was like, no, no, I'm just trying to hook up. I'm just trying to hook up. And now this girl is her fiance. And it was literally the second girl that she went on a date with from oh Tinder. Oh, my God. That's so funny. So, but that's cute to yeah, me. So and- it is cute. It is cute. But the problem, which I'm sure she's not going to hear this podcast. So that's why, <laughs> like, I'm not going to send it to her. So that's why I'm going to talk about it. But, like, 
her there's like issues in the relationship because of the fact that like i feel like she never really took time Mm. to like fix issues within herself that like contributed to that like unhealthy dynamic and stuff so it's not the best situation at least from my perspective so like i'm super happy for her and i'm like yes like lesbian love story like i live for it but at the Mm -hmm. same time it's again one of those situations where i'm kind of like i'd rather be single than to be in a relationship that's like not the healthiest you know yeah no totally i 100 percent agree yeah so i don't know like it's just I don't know, but I'm, I'm like, really shocked about, and the thing is, like, it's funny because you did literally tell me from the beginning, like, how's your girlfriend, yes. how's your girlfriend, I was like, no, yes. no, 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 I was like, nope, she's not my girlfriend, <laughs> like, that's not gonna yeah. happen, I was literally fighting you on that, you, the, this you really were. time, it was great, <laughs> and I was like, I told you, I was like, I'm and, not gonna stop calling her your girlfriend, so you better get over it, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, all right, fine. And now she's like, actually, my girlfriend. Oh, she's like, what the I fuck? Like, I'm just, yeah. Put so... it into the universe for you. That's all I gotta say. I know. Oh no, girl. Because... Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So I mean, dating online, especially for lesbians, I think is really interesting to navigate. Yeah. Well, I part of why I always liked. The idea, because I, I have a love-hate relationship with online dating, just as like a theory. Like, I, I'm very much like you. I would prefer to meet someone in person. I don't really, like, mm-hmm. I actually do like talking to people online and like getting to the, getting to know them and all of that. But my biggest problem is I, <laughs> like, I don't know. I run out of patience with some things very quickly. But like, I think for me, online dating is like, it allows me to kind of get everything out there like right up front. Like I'm a Mm. feminine trans woman who has a lot of passing privilege. People don't clock me as trans. People just assume I'm female, which is fine. But when you're dating, it gets into a very sticky situation, especially like, actually it doesn't matter if you're dating men or women. It's always like very precarious because men treat it as like, Oh, you're trying to trick me. And I think women would probably be the same way. So it's like, it's so much more awkward to like have to out yourself constantly in like the Mm. physical sphere, sphere. That sounds weird. I don't know why. Uh (laughs) Like in person, it's so much more awkward to be like, so yeah, I'm trying, like at what point do you even have that conversation with someone? And like, there's such a, there's like very, two distinct schools of thought in lesbian circles at this point and like some of them are very very much into trans women and then some of them are very much like not and so it's kind of like and and I guess it's the same really with everyone but like I feel like in this particular arena more than others it's very like distinct and like listen you don't have to be into me that is not something that I'm like I'm not that person like you do you whatever but it's so much mm-hmm. more exhausting to have those conversations in person and have to be like, so, you know, like, here's the deal. And like, it's kind of figuring out at what point do you have that conversation? Um, right. Whereas online, it's kind of just all out there. Like I'm very open about my trans identity, especially online and like any online profile, it's like, You know, I have it in at least three places. Like, I am a trans woman. Know what you're getting yourself into because I don't want to have to out myself to you. And the thing that, like, drove me crazy, like, even when with my ex, um, we were together for two years. And when we first met, we were on, um, oh, my God, what is that dating site? OkCupid. We met on OkCupid. And I had it in no Mm -hmm. less than three places. And the bottom line was um like you should message me if and i was like you're comfortable enough in your sexuality to know that you know dating a trans woman is you know doesn't make you gay basically and i remember my ex was like i had to read that twice and then look up to to the top because i was like wait why would i have to be comfortable in my sexuality like even reading my entire profile they still didn't see in three separate places that I was trans and I'm like 
Oh, wow. And so it's so like, you know, passing privilege has good points and bad points. And mm-hmm. it's, it gets frustrating because it's like, I don't want to have to constantly have this conversation with people. Like constantly having to out yourself is just so exhausting and annoying. So that is part of why I like the online thing is like, I like being able to just have it all out in the open and like, this is the deal. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. Mm-hmm. But, and I feel like, you know, when you're not, when you're not in person, you have more of an opportunity to try and get to know them before you meet up. So you're not just like, cause I'm very like you, the whole small talk thing is exhausting and like not the business. Like that's not a vibe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, like, I'm not here to sit with you and like, talk about, you know, the weather or like what restaurants you like, right. like, I want to talk about real shit, serious shit, you know, what was your childhood like, like fully that, like, I'm not going to talk to you about, yeah, you know, whatever fucking TV shows you want to, like, all of that shit's so boring to me. Like, eventually it's fun to talk about, like, just to know the person, but like, mm-hmm. I-, I don't want to start on that. And that was one of the things like that. I think I told you the story about that girl. Oh, I told you when it was happening. But that girl that I like hardcore fell for back in February who ended up Mm -hmm. ghosting me. And like we were talking for hours. And so I was like, okay, this is like, like, and we were talking about everything, like not stupid shit. We were talking about real, real stuff. And it just, it went by so quickly and it was so like, and I'm like, this is what I want in a relationship. Like, I want to be able to talk on the phone for you for like six hours, have it feel like three minutes and just really laugh and enjoy yourself and all of that. Like, that was so great to me. Yeah. And so like, that's, that's the kind of thing I want. And if I can find that, you know, I, I, that's going to be great, but I'm, I, I have very weird, like, dichotomy I guess when in my mind as far as like how I want to meet someone like part of me is like oh I think online might be the best and part of me is like oh I think in person might be the best oh my god so the the people doing our um like I can't think landscaping are just coming by so all I hear is like landscaping stuff blowing through Oh my god! Literally, that was just me like an hour That's ago. So but I think they finally left. That's so so yeah. <laughs> they start early here. Yeah, I think because Vegas, it's like 120, so you don't want to be doing that shit. At- oh yeah, for sure. I can't even imagine. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. I hope this isn't like in the background of this video. That's or this podcast. That's going to be so funny. Um, I was trying to think if there's anything else that we wanted to talk about because I'm I can't think I had like notes and stuff and like ideas and then you know that all goes out the window when you actually start talking (laughs) right (laughs) but yeah um I'm super excited for you I'm super excited for like you know to see where this goes for you too I think it's going to be great um I still want an invitation to the inevitable wedding (laughs) (laughs) oh my god well, yeah, you're definitely going to be invited if that happens. <laughs> Thank you. Trust no. me. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I don't know. I'm the sort of person that I I love to hype my friends. I love to, like, help. Because I have a lot of friends that I, I think we all attract the same sort of thing, which is, like, we're all we're all fabulous and gorgeous and amazing, but we don't always see that in ourselves yeah and so I tend to attract the sort of people who like need to hear it and I'm like always going to be that person who's like no you are great you are amazing like you deserve to be happy and right like that's I I knew it was going to be hard for you because I knew you'd been through you know that whole other situation we had talked about that a few times and Mm -hmm. um but I was like no you deserve to be happy you deserve to have like what you want so it's gonna happen right yeah it was definitely hard and I mean it's still hard for me like 
like you said, I'm not a super like confident mm-hmm. person despite like, you know, pictures and stuff that I post on yeah. Tumblr. Like I'm definitely I don't think I'm like hot. I don't think I'm like mm-hmm. whatever. Like I I have, you know, I've struggled a lot with like trying to be comfortable with my oh, body yeah. and like just and just kind of like building up my self esteem and stuff. Um especially like being fat, like, you know, totally. it's it's hard. Oh, like I try like, I know. Oh, yeah, it's just a lot. The struggle is real. <laughs> and yeah, so it's just like, I don't know. And the thing is that like, I've had because this is my first, I mean, I guess like my first really official relationship okay. because I think the thing was because like we've talked about like the whole struggle of like being yeah. bi and like trying to figure out like your identity yeah. and stuff or like your sexuality mm-hmm. and it's just for me I think the reason that I never really had a boyfriend <laughs> like an official boyfriend or anything growing up was because I think that like because I never ever thought that I was anything but straight until maybe like three or four years okay. ago so I, and I think it's partially because growing up, like, I didn't look at the girls around me, like, and wonder, like, oh, like, am I attracted yeah. to that or not? Because I never was, because I was always surrounded by really feminine yeah. girls. Same. So I was never, like, exposed to, like, more masculine or, like, gender nonconforming, like, women. Mm-hmm. So it was very, like interesting when i started getting on tumblr and like Mm -hmm. that's kind of where i was exposed to bitches Mm -hmm. and like more mass girls and then i was like oh like this exists and like this is something that i'm into you know that's that's how they get you and (laughs) you're right so like growing up like yeah i was into guys and like i thought guys Mm -hmm. were cute and like whatever and like i wanted to like date and like you know i would want to fuck like celebrities Mm -hmm. and stuff like that but like in front of me there hasn't really been a guy where i'm like oh yes i actually want to do like guys that have been into me like it's just and i'm always like hesitant anyway Mm -hmm. because again like with the whole like being fat and stuff i feel like a lot of guys um when it comes to fat girls like only want to like fuck fat girls in private like that type of thing and i'm like yeah i'm not about that like if you like me like you know you can ask me out on a date and we can date or whatever if i like you back but i'm not into like being used because i have nice tits like i'm not like yeah no so that's kind of the vibe that i would get from a lot of guys and i wasn't into Mm -hmm. it and then i just never ended up in any type of serious relationship and then the closest that I ever got was that last mm-hmm. girl that fucked me yeah. over or whatever. And it was interesting because she did make me feel like pretty good about myself mm-hmm. and like kind of not built up my confidence, but like allowed me to kind of see myself in a different mm-hmm. way, like the way that she saw me. So I think that's kind of part of the reason that I was like, having such a good time with her and stuff Mm -hmm. and like why I did kind of like fall Mm -hmm. for her and whatever but then like comparing it to now the way that my girlfriend makes me feel is like on a completely different level I love that like she literally like from the beginning especially when we started facetiming she would like just stare at me she'd be like oh my god you're so beautiful like you're so gorgeous right now and i didn't know how to handle that because like i said i don't take like compliments well and stuff so i was like oh i was like um no i'm not (laughs) and she was like yes you are like whatever and i would literally be like (laughs) no and then she would literally just she told me one time she was like i'm just gonna keep saying it until you believe it like i'll say it a million times if you want me to and i was like okay you're like that trust i'm I'm that person that's so cute though and that's how she is like she seriously and it's i can tell and here's the other thing is like my that friend that um is a lesbian that that met her fiance on Mm -hmm. tinder she is very protective of me because of how I've been hurt in yeah. the past and blah, blah, blah. So she is not really about the long distance thing. Fair. Like, she doesn't really understand it mm-hmm. that much. 
<clears throat> and when I told her that, like, I really like this mm-hmm. girl and, like, whatever, she was like, be careful, Natalie. Like, oh, be Lord. careful because you don't yeah. know, like, all this stuff. And I was like, yes, I understand. Like, I'm I'm not a dumbass. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be careful, yeah. whatever. But she was like, um, what did she say? She was like, because I told her, I was trying to make her understand, like, why I like this girl so much yeah. and why, you know, she was great. And I told her, like, some of the stuff that I just told you. And she was like, okay, but, like, words are just words. Like, you can't fall into that trap. Like, words are just words. And I'm like, look, (laughs) I understand that words are words. Like, actions are more meaningful than words, blah, blah. But, like, that's the thing is, like, it's not just words. Like, I know that she's not saying it just to, like, kiss my ass and, like, you know? Like, what does she get out of that? Like, she's not getting anything out of that. She's not going to have sex with me because you know she calls me yeah. pretty like she's not in front yeah. of me so it's just and it's more than that like it's the way that she like looks mm-hmm. at me and the way that she that she treats me like she genuinely mm-hmm. like cares about my happiness mm-hmm. and stuff and I tried to explain that to her and she was like okay so what so you're gonna be in a long distance relationship and I was like sure why not oh and then she's like so what so she's gonna come from Puerto Rico and visit you here and then you're gonna go over there and like that's expensive and like how long are you gonna do that and like one of you's gonna have to move eventually and all this stuff and I was like look you need to relax like I will figure it the fuck out when it gets like when I'll cross that bridge when I get there like I'm not I spent so long and like I'm telling you at the beginning like part of the reason I was so hesitant about this was because like I said I'm not super into the long distance thing but I like I couldn't deny the way that I felt about yeah. her so I'm like you know what and I listened to what you said and you were just like enjoy it yeah. like and I'm like yeah you know what fuck it like I deserve to be happy like I deserve to enjoy like this process of getting to know mm-hmm. someone and like whatever and at this point and like I told you know this girl I was like look I'm scared like I was like I'm really scared like I don't want to get my heart yeah. broken I don't want to blah, blah blah and she was super scared yeah. too but it's just at this point to me like I'd rather have her in my life in any way that I can yeah. as opposed to not having her yeah. at all and for as long as you so can. right exactly like I understand that like this is not the ideal situation no. this is not something I expected to happen mm-hmm. but like I like she makes me happy and I really 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 like her yeah. so fuck it like I'm you know, like I deserve, like you said, I deserve to be yes. happy. And, and it's just, it was hard for me to like come to that realization because I was holding myself back a lot. Yeah. But I feel like at this point, I finally let go and I'm just like, fuck yeah. it. Like, just enjoy it. Like, it well, doesn't, like, like, obviously the outcome isn't certain and like, who knows what's going to happen. And like, maybe I'll get hurt again. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But at this point, like, to me, it's yeah. worth it to like find and see, out. The thing you know? that I would say to your friend is like, I know that people, I feel like people have such a weird relationship with the concept of uh, long distance. But what I would say is just because someone is in your actual vicinity does not mean that they can't lie to you, that they can't hurt you, that they can't do all kinds of shit and fuck you over. Like just because someone's close does not make them somehow less capable of fucking up your life or hurting you or whatever like i get being a protective friend and not wanting to see you hurt like i don't want to see you hurt either but i feel like you have to be able to take a chance and take a risk and love is always worth it to me like there's always a possibility that you can get hurt you know there's always a possibility that something you know it won't last or whatever like that's just that's just reality like it can always happen just because you're far away from each other doesn't mean that it's more likely or less likely it just means it's always a possibility because that's how things go that's just how life is yeah so like this idea of like you know oh what if it's this what if it's this like any like literally anyone can tell you whatever they want at any point in time just because they're in the same vicinity or you can see them face to face people lie to you face to face all the time. Exactly. Like that's not something that's unique to someone online. And I think a lot of, uh, I guess a lot of maybe people somewhat older have like that kind of nineties mentality of the internet of like, 
you can't trust anyone on the internet because you know right that that very like don't talk to strangers that that whole yeah, thing yeah. that i know i was kind of taught in like the late 90s early 2000s oh, internet course. but then also I, and i was thinking about it i'm like it's funny that we say that but then like i've made a whole tumblr career on talking to strangers on the internet so i guess you know it's exactly not, not that big of a deal and then I just think it's funny, like I was thinking about um, this other day, I was talking to one of my Tumblr friends and she, and we were talking about the same thing. And she said, like, it's funny that, cause she's also, um, she found her butch on Tumblr too. Love that. And that gives me hope. <laughs> she, yeah, no, I'm telling you, like, I, I seriously did not think that this was ever going to happen mm -hmm. to me. And like, she started dating her butch, like probably like a couple months ago. And now. The butch is coming from Texas to oh. Florida to like meet her for the first Love time or for her birthday or whatever. Yeah. So, and they're like super cute together, whatever. But she was saying that like her friends also don't really like approve or like get the long distance <laughs> thing. And she told her friends like, what? So you think my soulmate is like 10 minutes down the road for me? Like that's not really realistic. Yeah. Like there's, it's such a big world. Like there's so many fucking mm -hmm. people out there. Like, and when you think about it, yeah, like, with the chances of the person, you know, I mean, of course, you can fall in love with, like, a million people, yeah. but there, the chances of, like, really the right person being within a 10-mile radius yeah. of you are, like, not super likely. Yeah. So, it's just, like, I just don't think it's a bad thing to, like, keep an open mind when it comes to that mm -hmm. stuff. And then what we were saying is, like, isn't it funny how people kind of look down on, like, oh, like, online relationships or, like, dating someone online, like, oh, you've never mm -hmm. met them, you never this, you never that, but they're very willing to meet up with uh, someone from Tinder that they just yeah. met 10 minutes yeah. ago online and, like, actually meet up with them in person and, like, risk, you know, whatever type of person yeah. they may be. Fully, fully that. And it's also, like, you could easily be catfished or something yeah. or, like, this person could be a serial killer to just start talking to them 10 minutes yeah. ago but you're willing to go hook up with them in person. But like, I'm weird for like falling for someone yeah. online that I've actually been getting to know for like yeah. a while. You yeah, know what no, I, mean? I, I totally know what you mean. Cause that's, uh, yeah. People are a trip sometimes. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I know. get it with your friends <laughs> because at some point they kind of like, I, I want to believe that most of your, most of my friends and your friends and like anyone's friends like has, the best interest at heart, but I think they also don't understand, like, especially for, you know, in the lesbian community, it's a small pool anyway. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to open it up to anywhere. Exactly. I mean, like I said, I literally have only ever met one butch in person in my life, and I only met her because of Tumblr, yeah. because we're both located in the same place and like we were mutuals and we started talking and whatever but like if it wasn't for tumblr i wouldn't have met this this yeah. butch that i started hooking up with and like in person like i seriously don't know where the butches are in my city same. because like this is miami yeah. like there should be like i know that there's like a, a good amount of lesbians here like i know i'm not yeah. like in some random like small mm -hmm. town but at the same time like i said like everyone and that's kind of why i got onto her because i wanted to see like okay where are the butches like are they just not in front yeah. of me like do i have to get on these apps to find Fully. them and i really couldn't even find them on those apps yeah. either so it was just really discouraging because i'm like well where the fuck are they right. because Believe there's that. like a shit ton of butches on tumblr but there's none yep. around me so tumblr and tiktok that's where they're all at I know. Oh my god, I've I've been on like lesbian TikTok. It's wild. It's so good. It's my thing. That's why I ended <laughs> up getting on TikTok. My friend, my girlfriends kept sending me, um, kept sending me pictures or not pictures. I'm so dumb. They're sending me TikToks of all these <laughs> girls, and I was like, oh my god, are you kidding me? Like I have I have to join this now. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I, had, yeah. I thought TikTok was just for like you know young people. Mm -hmm. and then i'm getting all these videos and i'm like when did my friends get into tiktok like what what has quarantine done to y'all 
<laughs> that's literally what happened to me like that's the only reason i downloaded tiktok because i was so bored during quarantine i was like well this looks stupid like let me just download it and then i would end up scrolling on there until like three yep. in the morning because i was bored and like finding mm -hmm. like funny videos and then of course i ended up on lesbian tiktok mm -hmm. and i was like oh my god like so it's definitely interesting but yeah there's there's a lot of lesbians yeah. out there they're just not directly in front of yeah, me same. i guess but it's hard same yeah but i'm hoping that you can find your oh, bunch of your you. dreams on yes. tumblr or in person yeah. you know I, listen whatever. i'll take what i can get you know it's so funny when you were talking <laughs> when you were talking earlier about how you don't think your soulmate is necessarily within a 10 mile radius i was reading something one time that was talking about how like both for most people the person they're going to marry is like they've met them by like seventh grade or something like that. And they mm. like something about how they like lived within their vicinity or something like that. And I kind of wonder if that's just like, not something people just do because this person is already close and they're like, well, I'm not necessarily going right, to leave. Like the... Right. It's like the convenience. Yeah. Back and they're like, I'm not going to leave where I am. So I guess this is as good as I'm going to get in this area. And for me, right. I think part of the reason long distance doesn't bother me is because I'm just like, listen, I will go anywhere. I am not tied to Vegas. I'm not tied to the state. I'm like, wherever you are, I will go because I'm not tied to mm -hmm. this shit. I don't care for this. Like I've lived here almost 20 years. I'm over it. I'm over the heat. I've been wanting to leave anyway. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm like, take me to wherever you are. Right. Like, there's nothing really holding you no. down over there anyway. No. So, so the whole, like, everyone's fear about, like, online date, or excuse me, uh, long distance dating and all of that, like, it just doesn't apply to me because, frankly, I'm not really tied to staying here. So it doesn't bother me in the least to say, like, if I met someone, uh, frankly, even, you know, another country, like, I am not tied to even America at all. So, like. Right. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm definitely kind of in the same boat where, like, I mean, I don't know that I would necessarily leave, like, in the near future. But I'm definitely not. I've lived in my, my whole life, yeah. literally. Well, except for, like, four years of college that I went to, like. Um, North Florida, but I've lived in Florida my yeah. whole life and I'm kind of fucking over it. Like, I'm ready to, if like something takes me somewhere else, like, I'm open to that possibility. Mm -hmm. So, I there's definitely not really anything holding me down here mm -hmm. either. So, I just, and like, when my friend was like asking me all these questions, like, what? So, she's going to come here? And I was like, yeah. And then, oh, so you're going to go over there and visit her? Yeah. Like, what's the issue? Yeah. Like, I, I don't see, like, that's not going to hold me back from something that I think that I really yeah. want. Like, it's just, it's not worth it for me to just give up on, on someone or something because, oh, like, it's inconvenient for me. Like, no, mm -hmm. bitch, like, I really like her and, mm -hmm. like, whatever, and I'm happy. So it's, yeah, it's hard. Like, I, of course, I would want her in front yeah. of me, like, 24-7 yeah. because I'm, like, low-key obsessed yeah. with her a little bit. Which but I love. it's... it's <laughs> We're like really obsessed with each other. It's like ridiculous. But see, that's the dream. You want someone who's just as obsessed with you as you are with them. It's not fun if it's one sided. Right. Exactly. Yeah, as long as it's a mutual yes. obsession, then I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just not, you know, like, of course, yeah, it's not the most convenient thing. It's not my ideal situation. Mm -hmm. But honestly, like, I'm having a good time, happy yeah. right now. So I'm. Yeah, and I just hope that you can find your butch Thank too you. because I'm literally going to cry when you get your oh, girlfriend because it's going to happen. Same. I know, I know. I, my biggest thing is like I'm not the most patient person, but I do know it oh, will so. happen because I'm just, I believe in it. So, um, right. But yeah. Yeah. This was so much fun, first of all. Um, thank you for joining me because I was not entirely like, sure how this was gonna go um because this is kind of like we've talked online but this is like the first official time that we've like talked 
Right. I had a lot of fun. I was super excited to talk oh, to you. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try, I, I'm going to probably edit up like the first few seconds where we were like trying to figure out how this works, but, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'm going to try and put this up. I think, did I say, I have it written down somewhere. What, what days I wanted to put up the podcast. I think like Thursday or Friday, something like that. Okay. Um, well, yeah, definitely let me know because I'm literally going to be the first one to listen yes. to it. And you got to send it to your girlfriend. Going to- yes i already told her i was gonna do it and she was like okay well you know i'm gonna listen oh, i was like okay great i'm gonna so send it cute. to you oh that's so cute. yeah I so that. she'll hear everything right i love that <laughs> but I yeah mean, she knows like she yeah. knows the story she knows how you are so <laughs> yeah she does so she knows i'm i'm a little crazy i'm not gonna <laughs> lie to you. but yeah no I, it's, it's fine you know <clears throat> Oh God, I'm all for me now. The best <laughs> people are, and that's just what it is. Yeah, I agree. Like, if you're not a little bit crazy, like you're kind of just yeah, boring. So, fully, you know, fully that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, this has been an hour. I think usually podcasts are like an hour. I don't want to go too. Yeah. Crazy and just we could probably talk about your girlfriend for like another two hours. I'm sure. <laughs> probably which would be funny but i don't know uh that'd be a very long (laughs) podcast it would um so yeah so you know i'm hoping that somehow through the magic of tinder or not tinder damn it the magic of tumblr or tiktok (laughs) or something that someone finds me did i i showed you that tiktok but did i tell you about that dream that i had about that tiktoker you showed me the TikTok that you made, and I think you said that you were like in like a gang we or something. In, or did yes. I imagine we that? were in a lesbian gang, and we were just at the <laughs> mall, and I I don't remember what we were doing. Like we were just kind of like at the mall together, and it was just a group of girls, and it was just so like it was such a good dream, and it was so funny because the comments I love yeah that. the comments on TikTok were like oh my god that sounds like the greatest thing ever, and like. I was like, I, it totally was. I was like, I wish I was brave enough to yes. just be like, slip into their DMs and be like, so in the least sexual way possible, I had a dream that we were in a lesbian <laughs> gang together. <laughs> That's amazing. You should do it, honestly, because you never know. Maybe she'll reply. I mean, it's funny because she she actually just posted a TikTok not too long ago about how um, she has like a, a lot of like straight girls in her dms who are like oh like i've always wanted to have sex with a girl and you look enough like a boy that i think it would be okay and i'm just like straight girls are wild like what are you doing dude that's so oh my god that's so frustrating oh oh, yeah yeah i would be like (laughs) i I, i'm like overly defensive of that and if that were my girlfriend i'd be like um excuse you first of all you're not wanted here second of all what are you doing exactly here like what are you thinking is gonna happen right like i just like look i'm all for you know exploring your sexuality whatever but it's just really annoying when straight girls use lesbians like as yes. or just like yes. tools to kind of figure their yes. shit out <laughs> like how about you go figure yourself yes. out and then when you figure it out, you can approach someone like a normal human being and actually get to know them and whatever. Yeah. Like, but you, it's just, especially with butchers, yes. I feel like they get used a lot for that yes. type of stuff. But it's so gross to just be like, well, you look enough like a boy that I think I could like handle it. Like that's no man. Right. That's disgusting. And that, that kind of that's only disgusting. further stigmatizes like femmes who do who are interested in butches because they're like well why don't you just date a man like that's not what i'm looking for oh my god i've been with men i'm not looking for that right and i saw a post that was someone posted i think i reblogged it yesterday the day before where it was like oh hot take um the butch femme dynamic is just as toxic as like a like a male like heterosexual Mm -hmm. like dynamic and i was like no 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 I was like, it's it's not like I think I've you've probably seen this phrase on Tumblr a lot where it's like, butches are not like men yeah. light. Like it's not, you know, that's not how yeah. it works. Like we're not just oh yeah, like 
you look like a yeah. man so i like no like it's not because like we don't want men if we wanted men i would be dating yeah. men right now. like it's just Holy, I, it's just trust i've men. had a lot of a lot of male interest so if i wanted a man i have plenty <laughs> of choices it's not right it's not on my table it's not what i'm interested in thanks for playing exactly oh, yeah God, yeah some people i i don't think they get it and no but it's also like i don't know i feel like some people feel like oh if you're a femme lesbian and you don't like femme lesbians then like you're not a real lesbian because you don't like women who like look like women maybe and i'm just over here right. like listen um i'm sorry but like i want to be the most femme person in this relationship like that's just how i am like right me especially too. as like a trans woman like i don't know it just makes me I, I don't know i don't know how to explain it it's just my own weird thing like i need to be the most femme person in any relationship like that's just how i right. am right i know i feel the same way and i also feel like there's at least for me like i've thought about this a lot especially when i was like am i a lesbian am i <laughs> bi whatever is like i like i said i'm not obviously into like feminine mm -hmm. girls and i've never even because the only girl that i've had sex with was a stone yeah. butch so i've never even like gone down on mm -hmm. a girl i've never like sucked a girl's titties <laughs> i've never done anything yeah. like that and i feel like that almost makes me kind of question like am i a real yeah. lesbian because i don't like the same things yeah. necessarily or at least don't have the experience with the same things that most lesbians Fully. do you yeah, know what no, i mean totally and it's just like it made me feel like am i like weird for that am yeah. i not really because that's honestly why i thought i wasn't a lesbian for so long because i'm like well i don't know if i would necessarily enjoy like eating a pussy yeah. but like that doesn't mean that i'm not down for it if someone yeah. asks but i just haven't been put in that situation yeah. and it's not something i necessarily like fantasize about or anything, like, you know yeah. what i mean so it just made me question a lot of stuff and like i feel like that's why i love butches mm -hmm. so much and like especially like i feel like i have a certain connection with like stone mm -hmm. butches because i feel like we just get each yes. other in that sense of like they like i can provide them with what they want and they can provide me with yep. what i want and like it's like a give and take of like we already get each other and we know each other's boundaries yeah. and like respect like femmes i mean I can only really speak for myself and for you, of course. Like, I know mm -hmm. that we respect people's boundaries well, yeah. in terms of, like, you know, anything. Mm -hmm. So it's just, like, there are a lot of people, like, my girlfriend, I think, told me, and then the girl that, um, that I was mm -hmm. fucking, they both said that, like, they had been with people that, like, disrespected their boundaries yeah. and, like, tried to do things yeah. that they weren't comfortable with. And I just don't understand that. No. I'm like, why? Like, why can't you just fucking respect like people? Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know. It's just weird. Like, they think like, oh, because you're a girl, like you have to do this and you have to be into this. Yeah. And it's like, no. Like, each person is an individual. Like, you could do what you want. Yeah. And then, on top of that, like my girlfriend said that she has like struggled with a little bit like not being good mm -hmm. enough for other mm -hmm. girls because. She has, like, kind of big mm -hmm. boobs, and, like, she doesn't dress, like, super, super masculine, like, mm -hmm. all the time, like, and, like, you know, and she has, like, kind of, like, big hair, and, like, nice mm -hmm. hair, and, like, it's just, like, apparently, she's told me that girls that she's fucked with before have told her, like, oh, but you still look like a girl. Oh, jeez. Like, they want that, like, man-like thing, and they want you to, like, look like a dude, and then she's like, well, I'm a girl. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I am myself and like you either like me or yeah. you don't but it's just really sad that like people and it's sad to me that like these are lesbians yeah. too like these are other lesbians yeah. that are putting like butches and mm -hmm. like gender non-conforming girls into a yeah. box of like what their expectations yeah, are fully. and what they need and it's like that's not okay fully, yeah. like I don't know and not everything has to be a label yes. not everything has to be put in a box well, like, like you could just be your fucking self and that's it yeah you know? no i i guess 100 so agree know. yeah so yeah i don't know but i'm really hoping that you find your 
your knight in shining armor yes. soon. I mean, I know it's going to happen. No, like I know. Said. Yeah. We know it's going to happen. We're putting it out there into yes. the universe. I think it's going to happen like at the most unexpected time because that's what always yes. happens, I think. Yeah. Well, and my thing is like, I'm, I try not, I, I'm always like, I'm not expecting any, like, I try not to expect it because I just, I don't know. I don't assume that people are interested in me, which is like, it's mm -hmm. my own baggage and that's like its own thing. I don't really assume that people are interested in me. So when someone, is i'm just like oh okay cool thanks like that's that's a thing so right. um it's gonna be interesting and i'm like i feel like i'm the type of person that like you're gonna need to very clearly say that you're interested because i'm just not gonna assume it so yeah no i'm definitely the same way because like she i mean actually i think i might have told her that i had a crush on her first <laughs> but when she was like oh yeah i have a crush on you too i was like what? right you're like wait a minute <laughs> i was like not expecting yeah. it to be reciprocated because oh. like i knew she wanted to talk to me and stuff but i was like well like whatever like maybe she does just want to sex or yeah. something but <clears throat> i'm definitely the same way where i'm like i have that baggage of like oh like you're interested yeah. in me like i'm never gonna be the one to assume like oh, everyone loves me everyone yeah. thinks i'm hot like no definitely definitely yeah, not fully so it's definitely an interesting adjustment yes. to get that like attention and to have someone like genuinely really really want yeah. you but it feels really good, good. So. and i'm glad and you deserve that um, thank <laughs> you <laughs> So yeah, I'm hoping that girl, you gotta let oh, me know. Of I better be like the first person that of you course. Call. I'm gonna be so excited. <laughs> and then you better invite me to your wedding. Obviously. I've already decided, by the way. <laughs> I've I've planned my wedding since I was like 16. And it's changed a tiny bit, but the basic idea is it's gonna be on Halloween. It's Ooh, gonna be okay. at, like, it's gonna be at like three in the morning. <laughs> And oh, it's going to okay. be fully in a cemetery because I am that bitch. Ooh, you know what? I actually really like that. And I have this idea. Wow. Yeah, I have this idea. And it's going to be, it's going to take so much work to like figure this out. But like my, I just thought about this part of like, um, obviously like I don't want to just do it at like a chapel in a cemetery. That's like not the vibe. Like I want it like in a cemetery, like, near people's graves or on people's graves whatever but i think would be really right. cute and romantic is to like find a lesbian couple that's buried together and like Ooh. get married by their grave that's actually super interesting i never would have thought yeah of that. i just think that'd be so sweet and like obviously like get permission from their family and talk to their family and like get to know right. them but i think that'd be so like I don't know to me that's like oddly romantic is that weird no it <laughs> is no 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 it's interesting like i never would have thought of that but like now that you mm -hmm. say it it actually is really nice because it's like especially like you said like getting to know like their family and like yeah. hearing their story mm -hmm. and stuff like i feel like that's really cute and like you would i don't know like it's it's nice to kind of feel connected to like other yeah, lesbians, yeah. you know, like, and to kind of just have that community and stuff and like, know, like these, this couple was like madly in yeah. love and like, they're literally buried yes. with each other, like for yes. eternity and stuff. And, like, and that was my thought. It, I don't know. That's actually really yeah. cute. Yeah. That was my thought. Like this couple that's just together for the rest of eternity. And that's the kind of marriage I would want. So. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Wow. I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I'm very strange in my, like, I, I kind of say I'm like a pastel goth. Like I love like all black mm -hmm. aesthetic and I love like dark, I don't know, dark, spooky shit, whatever. But sometimes I'm like, I don't know, am I a goth? Like I can't, I don't like all of the aesthetic. It's, it's a weird thing for me. And it's not like my, I think for some people, their aesthetic becomes a personality trait mm -hmm. and for me i'm just like i don't have time for that like i'm i'm so many more things than just one thing like i'm more than just trans i'm more than just a femme i'm more than just you know xyz and i feel like some people that becomes their entire personality mm -hmm. i also feel like the more femme i get the more i'm like in love with pink and flowers and girly things which is so funny to me because I used to be very, like, anti-pink. 
Mm, I used to be too. Isn't that funny? Because I literally like, I was, I mean, I've been like feminine my mm-hmm. whole life, but like I, I've, I've never been super, super mm-hmm. girly. Like, I like makeup and I like yes. dressing up and stuff, but I've never been like. Oh, like, well, actually, I'm lying because my room was pink at one point, but (laughs) (laughs) I've never been like, oh, my God, pink, Mm -hmm. everything pink. Like, I've just never. And I feel like it's almost like a weird thing growing up. Like, I don't know. It's like, oh, pink is lame or like pink is like whatever. And then as soon as I started, like, like I said, when I became a fan, like, it was just like, wow, like, I actually like this stuff. I'm like. I felt like I was, like, allowed to mm-hmm. like it now in, like, some weird way yeah. where, like, before I didn't really let myself kind of, like, feed into that, like, femininity, yes, I guess. Totally. But now I am. And I'm like, you know what? Whatever. Yeah. But I'm also – it's hard for me with, like, I don't really have an aesthetic. Like, I kind of just, you know, yeah. just have what I yeah. have. And, like, I don't know. But it's interesting because especially with femmes, like, you – there especially on tumblr there's a lot of like oh like femmes you know don't perform femininity for men yeah. because like there are like these tacky like lesbians like how could you think that's for mm-hmm. men like these tacky colors and these tacky clothes <laughs> and like bright loud yeah. things and like for me like i obviously get that because you know i know what they're talking mm-hmm. about but i don't necessarily relate to no. that because i don't dress like I don't put something on like yes let me look as tacky and like gay as possible Mm -hmm. today like it's just not something I really think about so I feel like I kind of struggle with like because I don't necessarily look like a femme or a lesbian at all um which is like a whole other struggle in itself like but it makes me feel again like it's another thing that kind of makes me feel a little bit excluded like from the community Mm -hmm. because it's like I don't fit into that like tacky, like loud, like you know I'm flagging as a fan yeah. like thing. Like I just don't. Yeah, but I just so... feel like that's like that's a Tumblr specific thing, or maybe even a TikTok specific thing. But it's not necessarily all right. of your life, and I feel like you're just who you are, and that's what it is. And I said this in my video with uh, my friend Haley. I was like, I don't think people should let the internet dictate what it means to be this or that like exactly just be who you want to be and who makes you happy and that's it right <laughs> and it's 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 interesting because yeah like i think that a lot of times like i know that it's hard because maybe it's like the community or whatever is not as prevalent mm-hmm. like in front of you but i feel like some lesbians just need to get off tumblr for a little while and like go interact with other lesbians <laughs> right. or like other people in real yeah. life because i'm like this is like you said at the end of the day like this is tumblr yeah. like it's like yes it's an amazing place to like you know discover things about mm-hmm. yourself and like relate to other people but at the same time i do feel like there's a lot of things that can put you like in that box of like oh well it should be like this yeah. and it should be like that and it's like if you actually go out into the real world it's really not mm-hmm. like that, that yeah. often so I think you need to like find a balance yeah, or whatever. Totally. But yeah, I think at the end of the day, like you just gotta be yourself and just fucking be happy. Yep. As long as you're not hurting anyone, yes. like that's all I really care fully, about. Fully, fully that. All right. Well, yeah. we took this a half an hour longer <laughs> when we said we were gonna end it. Because that's just how it goes. Yeah. Well, like I said, thank you so much for of having course. me. I had a really good time. Obviously, yes. since I couldn't stop talking. No, 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 no. So. Oh, believe me, I'm the exact same way. That's just, <laughs> you get two talkative bitches in a room, and that's what's going to happen. I know. We could seriously probably keep talking for like five hours. Probably. But, you know, you could just invite me on to like another oh, episode. Oh, I'm definitely. And I will gladly come Yes, back. I'm definitely going to do more. You're welcome to any of them. I don't like. This was the only one that I had like a somewhat plan for what I wanted to talk about because I wanted to talk about lesbian dating. Mm-hmm um but Mm -hmm. other than that like we can just once a week whatever we want to talk about for that week uh that's just gonna be our thing i think that'd be fun yeah i'd be super down for that just let me know but i'm super excited to hear this back and like hear my (laughs) right and like hear what we were talking about because now that i'm thinking about i'm like i kind of don't even remember what i just know but but that's how it goes that's how you (laughs) 
because I think what makes a lot of I've I remember hearing someone say this like the best podcasts are just like two friends just talking and you feel like you're a part of their friend group just hearing them tell stories yeah exactly I think that's what makes it fun and like more personal mm-hmm. and like you're just you know sitting there sharing things yes and, yeah but I'm so happy I finally got to talk same to you. Thank you so much for joining me on this first episode of Welcome to Hell. I'm your host, Narcissa DeVille. Um, That was my friend, Natalie. We are probably going to be end up doing this again. So um, yeah, thank you all so much for listening. You can subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts from. Bye.